Hi everyone! I am Ma'am PC at kung gusto mo ng mas pinadaling accounting tutorial, nandito ka sa tamang channel. Kaya subscribe na and click the notification bell to get updated to our upcoming videos. Mwah! Sa video na to, pag-uusapan natin kung paano ba gumawa ng adjusting entry sa mga transaction na involve ang depreciation. But first, i-define muna natin ano nga ba yung depreciation na tinatawag natin sa accounting. So, sa accounting, depreciation means decrease in the value of an asset due to a passage of time, wear, or tear. So, pag sinabing decrease in the value of asset, Pag sinabi ng decrease, di ba, bumaba, nabawasan. Yung value, halaga ng asset or pagmamayari. Ibig sabihin, yung halaga ng isang asset or pagmamayari, nababawasan or bumababa. Bakit po? This might be due to passage of time, pinaglipasan ng panahon or naluma, where, nasuot, katulad ng isang damit na kapag nasuot na, bumababa na yung value. And tear, pag sinabi ng tear, maaaring napunit, na damage, nagasgas. So, Ito yung mga dahilan kung bakit bumababa ang value or halaga ng isang asset. At yung pagbaba ng halaga na yon ay tinatawag na depreciation. Yan ang pag-uusapan natin dito sa video na to. And uh, it applies to the following assets. Usually, ang mga nagde-depreciate na asset ay building, machineries, furniture and fixture and equipment. And uh, kadalasan sa asset lang ito nangyayari. Dahil, ito yung mga pagmamayari ng business. So, ang depreciation dahil nakakapagpababa siya ng value ng asset ng business, kailangan din siyang gawa ng adjustments at the end of accounting period. Yan. So, did you know, uh, these are some trivial facts about depreciation. First one, there is an asset that do not depreciate. But it increases its value over time. Yung may, may asset daw, or pagmamayari ang business, na hindi bumababa ang value. Usually kasi sa mga asset talagang bumababa ang value niyan eh. Pero may isang special asset daw na hindi bumababa ang value. Pero tumataas pa sa paglipas ng panahon. And that is land or lupa. Uh, kaya naman maganda talagang mag-invest sa mga real estates. Kasi nakita yung lupa habang tumatagal yung panahon, mas nagmamahal ang lupa. Na all nagmamahal. Uh, dahil ang lupa kasi ay mahirap siyang palawakin nang siya lang mag-isa. But however, gayon pa man, kahit hindi nagde-depreciate ang land, lagi niyong tatandaan, it is subject to potential impairment. Hence, its value might also decline due to certain factors. So, kahit hindi siya nagde-depreciate, pwede siyang uh, maapektuhan ng potential impairment. Alimbawa, no, ang isang bakanting lote, naging haunted. Siyempre, walang magde-demand for that dahil haunted nga. So, ang gagawin nung may-ari, kung binabenta niya yung bakanting lote, Iya na niya, uh, babagsak niya yung presyo para mabili. Kung ayaw na niya doon sa property na yun. And another trivia. Did you know that assets that depreciates are called, ito yung tawag sa mga, as sa mga asset na nagde-depreciate or bumababa ang value. Depreciable asset. Yan, take note of that. Another fact Did you know that the value of depreciable asset, yung halaga daw ng mga asset na bumababa, uh, decreases continuously as they are used in the day-to-day -day operation of the business? Araw-araw mong ginagamit yung isang asset, araw-araw din siya nag-depreciate or bumababa ang value. Halimbawa, kung ang business mo ay uh, shipping of uh, cargo, uh, package, yan, parang si LBC, JRS, yan. So, ang uh, delivery equipment na ginagamit mo is motor. Yan. So, kung araw-araw ka nagde-deliver, 
araw-araw din na nagde-depreciate yung value ng motor na ginagamit mo. Another trivial fact, depreciation is classified as expense or contra equity. Bakit po siya expense? Uh, kung mapapansin nyo ang isang expense ay uh, like what I said a while ago, contra equity. Nagpapababa sa value ng equity or puhunan ng business. So, ang depreciation ay isang gastos dahil binabawasan niya ang value ng mga assets mo. Another one, uh, there are three important elements in the computation of depreciation dahil ang depreciation ay kinocompute. At yung three important elements na involved sa formula to compute the annual depreciation is the first one, cost, salvage value, and useful life. Pakita ko muna sa inyo kung ano yung formula before I discuss those one by one. Formula to compute for the annual depreciation is cost minus salvage value all over estimated useful life. And sabi ko kanina, mayroong tatlong elements sa pag-compute ng depreciation. Una ay cost. This refers to the purchase price. Ibig sabihin kung magkano mo nabili ang isang asset. Or yan yung tinatawag nating mga nagastos para ma-acquire mo ang isang asset. Halimbawa, itong suot kong damit ngayon, nabili ko siya for 100 pesos. And let's say, uh, dineliver siya dito sa akin, sa bahay ko. Kasi bawal lumabas eh. And uh, sabihin natin, ang cost of shipping fee or delivery fee is 30 pesos. So, nabili ko tong damit, ang cost ng damit na to, all in all, is 130 pesos. Kasi 100 yung damit, 30 pesos yung delivery fee. Ganun din yung pag-compute natin sa cost ng isang uh, asset. Kasama lahat ng nagastos para makarating sa'yo yung product at ma-acquire mo yung product. And then, second one, we have salvage value. So, it refers to the value of the asset at the point of disposal. Halimbawa, ayoko na yung ayoko na isuot yung damit na tong nabili ko worth 130 pesos all in all. So ibebenta ko na siya. And napagdesisyonan ko na ibebenta ko siya at 80 pesos. So bumaba yung value, di ba? Kasi nagdepreciate dahil nasuot ko na at luma na. Yung 80 pesos na yon, yun yung tinatawag natin na salvage value. So, ang salvage value ay kung magkano mo na lang maibebenta yung isang asset after mo siyang magamit. So, tinatawag din siyang scrap value or residual value. And then, next one, we have use of full life. So, it refers to the period wherein the depreciable asset are productive. So, kung ilang gaano kahaba ko nagamit, gaano kahabang panahon ko nagamit, Yung damit na to. So, sa pag-compute ng annual depreciation, dapat naka-express ang useful life into years, taon. So, ilang taon mo nagamit ang isang asset para makompute mo yung depreciation expense nung particular asset na yun. And of course, sa paggawa natin ng adjusting entry, meron din naman tayong pro forma na sinusundan para mas madali ang paggawa natin ng adjusting entries. So, of course, yung date, cut-off date pa din, ang debit natin ay depreciation expense dash yung pangalan ng asset. So, kung ang pangalan ng asset halimbawa ay equipment, isa-substitute nyo lang yung word na equipment doon sa nakalagay dito na asset. And credit natin, accumulated depreciation dash name of the asset or depreciable asset. So, wala namang nagbabago sa debit. Depreciation expense pa rin siya. And sa credit, accumulated depreciation siya lagi. Ang magbabago lang is yung pangalan ng asset, yung cut-off date, at yung amount. So, take note of that kasi gagamitin natin yan sa ating mga examples. So, take note of this formula as well dahil gamit na gamit siya sa bawat example na gagawin natin. Alright. So, example number one. ABC Company acquire Delivery van for $40,000 at the beginning of 2012. Assume that the van can use or can be used for 5 years and can be sold for 
$5,000. Give the adjusting entry on December 31, 2012. So, halimbawa, kayo yung owner ng ABC company at uh, bumili kayo, nag-acquire kayo ng delivery van. Uh, at the beginning daw ng 2012. So, that's January 1, 2012. And nabili nyo siya for $40,000. And then, uh, after 5 years, ay binenta nyo siya at $10,000. Siyempre, bumaba yung value kasi nagamit nyo na. Now, ano daw yung adjusting entry mo on December 31, 2012? Sa unang taon na na-acquire mo yung delivery van at ginagamit mo yung delivery van, ano yung adjusting entry mo for that accounting period? So, let's compute muna for the annual depreciation. So, cost minus salvage value all over estimated useful life. First of all, hanapin natin sa given ano ba yung cost, magkano ba yung halaga or nagastos to acquire the delivery van. So, nakalagay dito, $40,000. And then, yung salvage value is kung magkano mo na lang siya nabenta. So, naka, according to the given, that's $10,000 all over estimated useful life na 5 years. 5 years kasi siyang nagamit before ibenta. So, computing natin, substitute lang natin yung mga value, that will be $40,000 minus $10,000 all over 5 years. So, we will have $30,000 divided by 5 years and we will get ayan, $6,000. And yung $6,000 na yun, dahil first year na nagagamit yung delivery ban, $6,000 yung i- Re-record natin as adjustment pagdating ni cut-off date na December 31, 2012. Now, gawa na natin siya ng adjusting entry. Gamitin natin yung pro forma for bad debts na debit, depreciation, expense, credit, accumulated depreciation, and then yung name ng asset. Of course, first one is yung cut-off date. We have... December 31, ang debit natin, depreciation expense and yung pangalan ng asset. Dahil yan ay delivery van, we have debit, depreciation expense, delivery van. At yung na-compute natin kanina na annual depreciation, that's $6,000. For credit, we have accumulated depreciation dash delivery van, $6,000 as well. So that's the adjusting entry for this particular transaction. Example number two. A machine bought on January 1 costing 750,000 pesos with a salvage value of 50,000 pesos and an estimated useful life of 14 years is depreciated on a straight line basis. Consider calendar year. Take note kapag calendar year that starts with January 1 ends with December 31. Okay. So, let's find the annual depreciation cost. We have, ang cost niya is $750,000 pesos, rather, minus 50,000 pesos na salvage value all over 14 years na estimated useful life. So, 750,000 minus 50,000 is 700,000 divided by 14 years. And we will get 50,000 pesos. And that amount will be used to create an adjusting entry for this particular transaction. Alright, so ang date natin is yung cut-off date. Since calendar year ang nakalagay sa given, so ang cut-off period niya is December 31. Debit, depreciation, expense, and yung name na asset is machine. And yung na-compute natin kanina is 50,000 pesos. Credit, accumulated depreciation, machine, 50,000 pesos. And that's the adjusting entry for this particular transaction. Example number three. A building cost of $4,800,000 peso, rather, with a salvage value of... 900,000 peso and an estimated useful life of 30 years is depreciated on a straight line basis. It was purchased on April 1, consider calendar year. Kung mapapansin nyo, hindi siya nabili at the beginning of uh, 
the year or uh, at the beginning of the uh, hunting period kasi calendar year yung nakalagay therefore ang um, start niya is January 1 pero nabili yung building on April 1 so kung nakakalendar year tayo it start with January 1 it it will end on December 31 so nabili ang asset on April 1 so pagdating ni cut off period period na December 31 Ayan lang, from April 1 to December 31, ilang months pa lang nagagamit yung building. So, we have April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So, 9 months pa lang nagagamit yung building. So, let's compute kung magkano ang depreciation niya for 9 months. Okay, compute mo na natin yung annual depreciation. So, ang cost niya is... 4,800,000 pesos minus 900,000 pesos divided by 30 years na useful life. So, we, ha we will have 3,900,000 pesos divided by 30 years at makukuha natin ang annual depreciation worth 130,000 pesos. But that's for 12 months. Pero, sabi dito sa given natin, from April 1, kung kailan nabili yung building, to December 31, 9 months pa lang ang nagdadaan. So, magkano ba kapag 9 months pa lang? So, para makuha natin, yung 130,000 pesos na annual depreciation, multiply natin sa 9 months all over 12 months. 9 months divided by 12 months. And, we will get 97,500 pesos and that amount, yun yung gagamitin natin sa paggawa ng, uh, ng adjusting entry. Lagi nyo tatandaan na kung magkano lang ang kailangang i-adjust, kung magkano lang ang, ang nagamit doon sa particular na accounting period, yun lang ang i-adjust natin. So... Alam nyo na naman yung pro forma natin, wag na natin ilagay dito. Ang date natin, since uh, calendar year daw ang i-consider, it will end on December 31. Ang debit natin, depreciation expense building, 97,500 pesos. Dahil yun yung na-compute natin kanina. Credit accumulated depreciation building, 97,500 pesos. Example number 4. An equipment cost 10,000 pesos with a useful life of 5 years was purchased on January 31, 2014. Create an adjusting entries on December 31, 2014. This time, kahit na January siya nabili, ay hindi naman siya January 1 na purchase, which is yung start ng accounting period, kundi January 31, dulo na ng January. Therefore, si January, hindi natin siya pwedeng i-count as 1 month dahil... Uh, patapos na yung January nung nabili yung equipment. If that's the illustration for this accounting period, starts at January 1, ends at December 31, yung shaded part, yan pa lang yung months na dinaanan ng equipment habang siya ay ginagamit at nagde-depreciate. So, if that was purchased on January 1, yung first month niya will be on February 31. Second month, March 31. Third month, April 31. May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December 31, yung 11th month. So, yung transaction nito, ang useful life na na-consume is the first 11, 11 months. So, magkano ba ang depreciation expense for the first 11 months? Hanapin muna natin yung annual depreciation niya. So, yung cost natin is 10,000 pesos minus salvage value. Wala namang nabanggit. So, lagay natin 0. Divided by estimated useful life na 5 years. So, 10,000 pesos divided by 5 years, we will get 2,000 pesos. So, yan yung annual depreciation niya. That's good for 1 year or 12 months. But, since the purchase siya, the, uh, January 31, Cut off is December 31, 11 months pa lang yung nag depreciate So, to get the 11-month depreciation, the 2,000 pesos annual depreciation will be multiplied to 11 months over 12 months. And we will get 
1,833.33 na ka-round off na siya. And that amount will be used to create an adjusting entry for this particular transaction. So, ang cut-off date natin is December 31. Debit natin, depreciation expense pa rin. Name ng asset is equipment, 1,833.33 pesos. Credit accumulated depreciation equipment, 1,833.33 pesos. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat. Huwag kalimutang i-like at i-share ang ating video because sharing is caring. And of course, pasasalamatan natin ang ating mga sponsors. Thank you so much, Lance Mendoza, for editing my video. And thank you so much, Enakais and students from the other school who always appreciate our video. God bless everyone. Till next time. Mwah.